Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at question 68 to 70, which is about an ice cube being placed into a strong brown solution at room temperature. So 68 says, after the ice is placed in a brown solution and before any of it had melted, the level of the brown solution was closest to what? Okay, so we've got our ice cube here, which I've drawn out, and um, we've basically got two forces acting on it. We've got the weight of the ice cube, pulling it down but because it's floating on the surface there's also going to be buoyancy force so we know the equation for weight is mass times gravity so we can work out straight away that the weight is going to be 0.1 kilograms times 10 so the weight is going to be one newton of force so now given that the ice cube is floating at the top it's not moving up it's not moving down we can say that the buoyancy force is going to be equal to the weight which is going to be equal to one newton and the buoyancy force is going to be volume multiplied by the density of the liquid and multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Now, before we get into any of these numbers, the issue I have is with the units here. So we're going to be looking at the change in volume in milliliters, but we're given densities in terms of meters cubed. So there's a few things you need to know that meter cubed is going to be, uh, sorry, meter cubed is going to be 1 times 10 to the 6 centimetres cubed. And we know that 1 centimetre cubed of water is going to be equal to 1 milliliter of water. And using these conversions, we can get an idea of how to convert these densities into something that's a little more useful. So to convert the brine into kilograms um, per centimetres cubed, because we're going to be dealing in centimetres cubed and eventually milliliters, um, we can divide this through by 10 to the 6. So we end up with 1.1, sorry, 1100 times 10 to the minus 6. And the units for this are going to be kilograms per centimetre cubed. Great. Well, now that we've done that, we can simplify that to 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3. Again, the same units here. So now the units have been fixed we can work out what the buoyancy force is and uh, we know it's going to be one newton so we can set this equal to one we need to know the volume the density is going to be 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3 and the acceleration due to gravity is going to be 10 so we can simplify this even more to v times 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2 equals 1. so let's uh, bring the 10 to the minus 2 across to the other side and it'll become this will have 1.1 V and so we have 100 divided by 1.1 is going to be the change in volume now and there's a couple of different ways of working this out you could do the uh, 11 over a thousand or uh, you can work out that if you had uh, 90 times 1.1 you'd end up at 99 so that's a pretty good approximation so V is going to be 90 centimeters now the original volume was 40 milliliters and this would be centimeters cubed sorry increase in volume um as we said one centimeter cubed is going to be equal to one milliliter meaning that the increase is going to be 90 milliliters so the final volume is going to be roughly 490 milliliters and if we compare that to the answers we've been given uh, that gives us an answer of b if we look at 69 then what is the level of the brine solution after all the mice, all the ice was uh, melted? So we've got 100 grams of ice, which corresponds to um, 100 mils of water. So we just need to add 100 onto our 400 that we had before, and we'll get an answer for C. And then if we look at uh, number 70, it says, suppose water at the same volume and temperature had been used instead of the brine solution. In this case, by the time all the ice had melted, the water level would have risen by exactly the same amount because it doesn't matter um, what the liquid was. The volume would increase again by this 100 mils mark. So that will give us again an answer of C. So that was question 68 to 70 um, of section 3 of the Green Book, but I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.